I told you I'd be back in February. Welcome to episode one of our Journey into Deep Time subseries, and episode nine of About Our World as a Whole. For the next three episodes, I'll be focusing on the wonders of the geologic timescale, the eons and eras of life on Earth, and the extinction events between them. Today, we'll be starting off with the Precambrian eons, the dawn of life, and the Paleozoic era. <laughs> What is the geologic timescale? Well, in short, it's the timeline of Earth's entire history. Geologic time starts with the formation of Earth around 4.543 billion years ago. Not million, billion. This is the Hadean Eon, the first of the Precambrian Eons, named after the hellish state Earth was likely in at this time. During the Hadean, Earth was bombarded by asteroids, comets, and even a protoplanet called Thea, which sent debris into space, which would later form the Moon. This environment was far too inhospitable for life. By the Archean Eon 4 billion years ago, Earth had cooled down quite a bit, leaving the planet covered in a vast ocean with few landmasses here and there. At the bottom of this endless ocean were deep sea hydrothermal vents. At hydrothermal vents, Minerals from the crust are able to react with ocean water, making it warm and basic. This aided in the process of abiogenesis, or put very simply, living things being produced from non-living things. Deep sea hydrothermal vents were able to produce organic molecules such as amino acids, proteins, and even RNA. Eventually, these molecules, through the process of natural selection, were able to orient themselves together and reproduce creating the first protocells around 3.5 billion years ago. These protocells paved the way for more complex single-celled organisms. This brings us to the Proterozoic Eon, which began 2.5 billion years ago. The first large supercontinent, Rodinia, formed during this eon. At a point during this eon, mitochondria were their own organisms before they became a part of other cells. Due to high volcanic activity for the last 2 billion years, the atmosphere was full of carbon dioxide. A certain bacteria, almost 2 billion years ago, took advantage of this, and through natural selection, began a process called photosynthesis. This bacteria was, and still is called, cyanobacteria. Later, about a billion years ago, came the ancestor to all plants, a seaweed-like algae which also practiced photosynthesis, setting the stage for the most important event in the history of life. You see, photosynthesis uses water, carbon dioxide, and the sun's energy to produce glucose, or energy, for a plant, releasing oxygen as a byproduct. Soon, Earth's atmosphere began to replace the carbon dioxide with oxygen. At the same time, the ozone, or O3, was forming due to all the oxygen in the atmosphere. The ozone absorbs a portion of the sun's radiation, making the sun's rays less harsh on the planet below. Due to this new and bountiful supply of oxygen, single-celled organisms began to become more complex. This all culminated in a single event about 541 million years ago called the Cambrian Explosion. This event marked the beginning of a new eon, the Phanerozoic Eon, a new era, the Paleozoic Era, and the beginning of the first period of complex life, the Cambrian Period. The Cambrian hosted a wide assortment of odd creatures, like the bizarre spiked worm with legs, Hallucigenia, the Radiodonts, who the Pokemon Anorith is based on, and the still living today, Nautiloids. In addition, the first plants colonized land during this time. A majority of fossils from the Cambrian are found in the Burgess Shale in British Columbia, Canada. The first vertebrates also lived during this period. They were like hagfish, jawless fish who had a skull and no vertebral column. The Ordovician was kind of like a continuation of the Cambrian, with a few additions and removals from the script. 
The Ordovician gave rise to giant shelled squids like the 24 foot long Camaraceras, brachiopods, which are still alive today, and further developed the vertebrates. However, the Ordovician was also ground zero for the first mass extinction event of Earth's history. A mass extinction event is defined as a sudden extinction of over 50% of Earth's species over a relatively short period of time. Now, extinction events happen all the time. In fact, they are the border between geologic periods and epochs. The Ordovician Silurian mass extinction event wiped out 85% of all life on the planet over a span of only 5 million years. 5 million years sounds like a long time, but in geological time, it's close to nothing. If you take into consideration that the Ordovician lasted 45 million years, you'll start to realize the scale of this, of this extinction. This extinction event is theorized to have been caused by rapid global cooling, and as a result, receding sea levels. Some of the biggest players of the Silurian period were the Eurypterids, like Megalograptus, Turagotus, and the eight-foot-long Jackalateris. Or Jackalateris. They were a group of giant arthropods commonly referred to as sea scorpions. During this time, fish were also diversifying into the first jawed fish and the first freshwater fish, setting the stage for their colonization of land. In addition, the ozone layer was fully formed by this time. At last, we reached the final three periods of the Paleozoic era, which just happened to be my three favorites. Starting with the Devonian. The Devonian was home to some of the coolest and most important animals of the history of life. Let's start with the placoderms. The placoderms were the were, the placoderms were a group of fish with heavily armored heads. The largest of them was Dunkleosteus terrelli. Dunkleosteus was a giant at up to 20 feet long and weighing between four and five tons. They were known for their plated heads and their nasty bite. Their jaw shape gave them a powerful and devastating bite. Moving on, we have the first fish to colonize land. Early tetrapods like Ichthyostega appeared near the end of the Devonian. They would soon go on to become dominant on land, giving rise to the reptiles. However, the Devonian ended once again in mass extinction, killing around 80% of life on the planet. The cause of the mass extinction is still unknown, but hypotheses like climate change, plate tectonics, and even an asteroid impact have been suggested. Remember the Carboniferous period that I mentioned in the last video? Well, this is it. The Carboniferous was a time of increased oxygen in the air. During the Carboniferous, about 35% of the air was oxygen, while today it's only around 21%. This allowed two groups of organisms to thrive, plants and arthropods. You see, arthropods don't breathe like we do. Instead, they breathe through gas transfer in their skin. As larvae, they cannot control this gas transfer, so many would risk taking in too much oxygen. The solution? Get bigger. If the larvae became bigger, their oxygen intake would be just enough, so through natural selection, arthropod larvae became bigger. With bigger larvae came bigger adults, resulting in giant arthropods like Meganeuropsis, a griffin fly with a wingspan of over one foot, and Arthropleura a millipede which was one meter thick and two meters long. The Permian period was a period of great triumph and catastrophe. Tetrapods finally gained grasp of the land and diversified into the basis for the, the tetrapods we see today. There were two clades of reptiles who would be successful up to the present day, the diapsids and the synapsids. The diapsids had two holes in each side of their skull, and would go on to evolve into lepidosaurs, archosaurs, rhynchocephalians, and pantestidines. The synapsids, who have one hole on each side of the skull, would go on to evolve into therapsids, also called stem mammals or mammal-like reptiles, who would give rise to the mammals. During the Permian, therapsids were dominant, but that was all about to change. The Permian period was the epicenter for the single largest mass extinction event in Earth's history. 
The Permian-Triassic mass extinction event, more commonly referred to as the Great Dying. The Great Dying began due to the formation of Pangaea heightening volcanism and releasing 100,000 tons of carbon dioxide and ash into the atmosphere, no doubt killing most of the plants and causing a domino effect of extinction as a result. The Great Dying killed 90% of all life on Earth, killing 95% of all aquatic life and 70% of terrestrial life. I'll see you in April with part two of this series, the Mesozoic Era, the Age of Reptiles.